Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me on the runway with my cargo SSTO, which has the coolest cockpit ever. As you can see, if I click the retract the cockpit button, the cockpit retracts and goes into hypersonic mode. That is the best thing about the B9 pack. I mean, it's got a lot of great things, but that is the best thing. That little thing. Anyway, so I was asking myself earlier, um, what shall I do with this half billion dollars I have, which I didn't get from robbing a bank? Shut up. Um, yeah, so I was wondering, what would I do with my half billion dollars? Um, should I buy a space shuttle or an SSTO? So today I'm going to find out through the medium of Kerbal Space Program, you know, for all of you out there with your half billion dollars from your bank jobs and things. Anyway, this will probably be about a two-part episode. Uh, well, about a two-part, that made no sense. It'll probably be about two videos or something where I do, because this video will be mainly about launching and cargo and that sort of thing, and the next one will be landing and fun stuff. Do stick around for the next one, because this plane itself defies the laws of Kerbal Space Program. I'm not going to tell you what happens, but it's freaking cool. Anyway, so, um, I'm going to be testing kind of the cargo uh, and the flight paths and how easy it is to get to orbit. Um, yeah, so this is mainly stock, except for the B9 wheels and fuselage and cargo bay, and fuel tank at the back, which kind of blends in with the cargo bay. It's just behind the cargo bay. Oh, there's the space shuttle over there. Kind of ruined the chronology already. That's annoying. Yeah, I, I've already, this is post commentary, and I've already flown the space shuttle and things. Um, doing hand movements, you can't see them, hopefully. There you go, there's the wheels away. Anyway, right, so this is taking a small satellite to orbit about um, like a little over a ton, which is the same as the uh, space shuttle takes to orbit. They can both take a lot more than that, they both take about the same to orbit, so I didn't worry too much about kind of getting any uh, uh, kind of getting specific weights and things. Uh, I think at the top end they get about three and a half tons to orbit if you fly them very well. Uh, you can see inside the cargo bay just there there's some RCS and the probe. So I did, so I kind of left it with about one ton so it would just definitely get to orbit and kind of represent how it will work for you know doing stuff. Um, but there are lots of pros and cons to each, uh, each vehicle. Primarily um, an SST. What am I doing with the camera? Past me is oh yeah, there's the there's a the little uh, cockpit there inside. Yeah, they've actually animated that. Anyway, the main pro of this of this craft right here is that it is a hundred percent reusable if you land it right. Um, and you know, the stuff in the cargo bay obviously stays in space, but it is a hundred percent reusable, which makes it cheap and probably better than the shuttle. But the shuttle is cooler and um, bigger and has a rocket and is freaking a badass. Uh, because, I mean, yeah, you put parachutes on the boosters like they did with the real shuttle, and that made them reusable, but the actual main tank, not reusable, and the shuttle itself, of dubious reusability, because a space shuttle would actually cost $450 million, and then reusing it would cost $550 million, or something about like that. It would take 10,000 people, like, nine months to, to to actually reuse the shuttle. It was the stupidest... Well, it wasn't the stupidest idea. There were pros to having a space shuttle, but it was not cost-effective on the current technology, which was, like, technology in the 60s or so. So, I mean, uh, so that didn't go brilliantly. Um, but there is plans... There are plans, even, for the for an SSTO in real life called Skylon. That's a British spacecraft, I believe with hybrid engines, kind of like the rapiers on the back of here. They are not, uh, they are stock, as I'm sure the majority of you know. Um, the hybrid engines, which switch over from normal power to, ro uh, to from, from jet power to rocket power. So they're pretty good. It means you don't have to lug extra, extra stuff to orbit. Um, I am using five, because you do need thrust on a big spacecraft like this. Uh, I probably can, you can build a much bigger one than this. This is actually, it's a big plane, um, but compared to like the kind of SSTOs you could build with these engines um, it's it's pretty small you could build some pretty huge ones but anyway at about 10 kilometers a little while ago um, I tilted over a little bit because now you want to be gaining speed and when I've climbed about another kilometer I'll tilt over a little bit more because if I uh, if I'm going too slowly in the high atmosphere there will be no air intake and I need to be going about 11 to 1200 meters a second um, on jet engines before I switch over to rocket engines or it probably won't get to orbit because even with rapier crafts um, which are actually very you could, they, they kind of give you quite a big leeway as to what can get to orbit 
this um, is of its weight and kind of lack of fuel. Yeah, you saw the fuel tank in the back there, which I was talking about earlier, which don't have tail fins on it. I put some tail fins on it, then some replacement stuff, forgot to put them back. But it doesn't matter. Let's say I was saving weight. Yeah, that's what I was doing. But yeah, if you um, screw up uh, your speed, then you kind of screw up the whole flight with this. Um, they are both very hard crafts to fly. The shuttle is incredibly difficult. Well, okay, I say incredibly difficult. I've flown it quite an, a, enough for it to be fairly easy. Once, you, once you're used to it, it's not that bad. Um, but it is just, a lot can go wrong. It does a lot of flipping if you're not careful and get the fuel transfers wrong. And you'll see that in, uh, in a while. It's, it's a stressful launch. Uh, whereas this, this is actually fairly easy to fly. Uh, as long as you kind of keep it pointing at the right kind of elevation and uh, make sure you don't flame out. It's it's actually all right, uh, better than I thought. And um, during re-entry, well, not actually during re-entry, um, during flying back home, um, this is much better because it has a much better, better cross range. And the shuttle, when you ditch the tank, it's it's dead in space. It doesn't have any fuel. It only has RCS for doing stuff, uh, which isn't great in atmosphere. It's great. It's fine in high atmosphere and orbit, and it's great for all that. But uh, when you're in atmosphere, you want this plane. However, actually on re-entry. The shuttle, because that has a smaller wingspan, and just generally shuttles do have smaller wingspans, um, they're better on re-entry. If you had, say, deadly re-entry or f like far and things, this would be pretty breakable. But uh, at about 19 kilometers, you want to be going as straight as possible, still rising a bit so you're not uh, losing altitude, um, and you want to still be rising through the atmosphere so you don't waste fuel. But you do want to have time to accelerate to over a thousand, uh, over 1,100 meters a second. Um, that's about the critical speed. I'd say. Um, yeah, and then I haven't actually... Uh, do oh, it's actually started to burn up. I'll yeah, not burn up, obviously. I don't have deadly reentry on it. This doesn't work with deadly reentry. Rapiers are killed by deadly reentry. Um, but anyway, oh, now I'm pulling up a little bit more, I think. Oh, yeah, because it, it was almost do it was almost dipping. But yeah, um, with deadly reentry, this has quite a lot of surface area that are wings and things that can burn up quite easily. So it has actually quite a few problems um, during re-entry, whereas the shuttle's quite, quite good. Uh, and in, sp in in atmosphere, I think this is kind of easier to fly because obviously it has engines. I mean, when it's launching, it's not strapped to a rocket. When it's coming back, it isn't just a glider. Um, but in space, it's much easier to move maneuver the shuttle because it's much smaller. Um, it's much smaller. It has a lot more RCS. I mean, you could put more RCS on this. This is um, more, I'm kind of talking more about um, SSTOs in general rather than this particular SSTO. And you may notice the particle effects of, oh, it switched over to rocket engines and my particle effects are still a bit lacking. There's only two of those little dot things behind it. Usually there's three. Anyway, when it switches over to rockets, you want to throttle down slightly, close off the air intakes to stop overheats and point almost directly up. I was going to almost said almost directly uply. That's n no, no sense, no sense. Um, yeah, so you want to point almost directly up um, to just get your Apple Apps out of the atmosphere because you have the velocity now, you just kind of want to be out of the atmosphere. And you may have noticed that there is actually mech jab on this craft, so I can focus on the spacecraft without having to constantly switch to map view, which I forgot to do in the shuttle. So this does have the advantage of that, and um, I forgot to do in the shuttle. But the shuttle is generally harder to fly, so it probably would have benefited. Uh, yeah, oh, and there's the, uh, there's the other satellite from the shuttle absolutely uh, destroy the continuity there. Oh, it doesn't matter, it's fine. Everything's fine. Anyway, that is the Apple Apps out of the atmosphere. And now we must gain velocity, or in a little bit, when um, we're in a be better position and it won't be wasting energy and raising our Apple Apps too much. Um, but yeah, I still have quite a lot of fuel left. I did actually, with the jet engines, burn quite heavily into my uh, liquid fuel oxidizer fuel. Um, you lick fuel off. Yeah, yeah, that made sense. I was just kind of, just, did that make sense? No. Anyway, I did burn a bit more fuel than I should have on the jets, but it's better to burn with the jets than the rockets because they're more efficient. They, I think at their lowest they have an ISP of over a thousand, whereas these are about 360 or something, like a normal rocket engine. Uh, yeah, so the shuttle um, has uses KW rocket tree engines, which are, I think, slightly more efficient than some engine I'm not sure I they're a little more efficient but I just use them because they look nice um, 
and I think they are slightly lighter than the standard LVT something engines. Uh, but yeah, I'll explain more about the shuttle when you see it. It'll be uh, easier to explain. But now, now we need to accelerate quite fast. But uh, because I have five engines, I don't have to throttle up fully, and you kind of just once you're out of the atmosphere with this, it's quite a nice ease to orbit. You just kind of just go, and it's quite nice. Whereas with the shuttle, it's quite it's not that bad when you're launching. But in space, there's some imbalances when you have the fuel tank attached, so you want to ditch that and do some RCS things when you go into stations and things. But um, yeah, they have different characteristics. I think the shuttle's nicer in space, but the plane's nicer in atmosphere. That's basically it. Um, I'm not sure entirely which one. I think it would be easier to make a shuttle that could take a lot of a payload to orbit because, um, because yeah, these take about the same payload to orbit, and this uses actually less fuel. But it's actually quite hard to well, not probably not for most people, but. Um, well, most people, I don't know, but that's a relative scale, but for, I mean, it wouldn't be, it would, I think it would be probably easier to engineer a shuttle um, in some, de of some description that can take quite a lot of mass to orbit rather than, natu an uh, rather than a natural plane, especially because it changes the flight char characteristics quite a lot, and if you bounce the fuel tanks more on a, a shuttle, it, it would just generally be easier. Um, yeah, so, that's... That would be a whole other video. I'd ha I might, I might actually do one about a uh, third one about building, or maybe put it in the next episode. I'm not really sure. Um, I don't want to make t too many videos out of this. This was originally going to be one video, but yeah, I didn't want to cut out loads because I want to. Because this has been like a 10 minute, 11 minute launch, and you kind of have to get that into it because this takes 11 minutes to launch or so, or maybe a little bit more, more like 12 actually. Whereas um, the shuttle is a little bit faster, but this isn't like my rocket races there. Because um, I've done quite a few rocket races where I race iconic vehicles against each other. I haven't raced Saturn V against anything yet. I don't know if I'm going to do any more, but you know, whatever. Anyway, that is in a stable orbit out of the atmosphere. I think the atmosphere ends at around 69,000 meters on Kerbin. Although it's best to be at 70 because that's, you know, safe. You're definitely out of the atmosphere at 70. Probably out of the atmosphere at 69, but it's fine. Anyway, so I will just circularize that. Uh, Hoping I left this in editing doesn't really matter, but uh, it is always good to, you know, circularize your orbit, especially if you're ditching a satellite, ditching a satellite, placing a satellite in orbit. Say for a company, they want you to do exactly what they want. Although the satellite on this does have a lot of RCS, as you will see in a second. There goes the B9 cargo bay. Uh, the shuttle and the plane use the same cargo bay, so you know. Um, and this is a light probe, and I mean this whole thing can only take a little bit to orbit. Um, like three and a half tons at most, but if you think about the weight, the mass of the cargo bay, I'm not entirely sure of the mass, but I mean it does take quite a lot of stuff to orbit that isn't, you know, flying materials. But anyway, this is my small satellite that will do science, I guess, although this is a free mode save, so it's more of a communication satellite. I just wanted to put some stuff on it to make it look good, and uh, got some RCS for maneuvering into the perfect orbit, or moving out of the way of some space debris. But anyway, uh, that is that in orbit. I will close the cargo bay doors and try to take that decoupler home. Doesn't work because that never works. But landing will be in the next uh, part of this. So let's get over to the runway again for the shuttle. Now I am launching the shuttle off the runway so that will melt that nicely and I won't be able to use it again because I built it in the space plane hangar out of ease. But anyway, I th you uh, launch... At, at, at first I, use, I launched about a third thrust and then throttle up to bounce it out because you want to be kind of pointing, because the engines, which you can't quite see right now, then nah, now you can, the engines are actually tilted, um, because they it, there's an imbalance if you point them straight and you can't get engines that gimbal enough. I think the real space shuttle's engines gimbal by about 10 degrees, so yeah, and this doesn't gimbal quite as much. But this is a fairly impressive feat. Those engines are, um, well, it, if you saw Scott Manley's series, you'll notice it's quite similar to his. Uh, shuttle. It does have a few changes, like to have the fuel cross feeds. Um, it goes, it burns from the bottom tank first because you want to be keeping weight in the nose. Although that's a problem with the solid rocket boosters, because then it wants to tip over. So you can use RCS to counter that, ditch them. But you, then you want, when there aren't any solid rocket boosters, you can see the RCS is really pushing against the solid rocket boosters now. But um, when there aren't any boosters on, you want it to be a, you want it, you want quite a bit of weight in the no mass in the nose for most of the launch. And then when you're in space, you want it in the tail end of the tank. So there is a bit of fuel transferring while launching this. Um, so yeah, I mean, 
it's it's okay my phone's about to go that's annoying um or it might be it's just or just general interference with my speakers anyway i've ditched the solid rocket boosters a little while ago before i started talking about my phone um and now you just kind of ascend almost like you're descended in a normal rocket but i think i do tip over slightly more in this launch um first off because you're uh, that's actually the best way to do it to kind of gain as much velocity in this shuttle and partly because there's a slight imbalance um a little bit later now uh i mean this is as i've said of dubious reusability because uh, you can't reuse the main fuel tank or the boosters on this um but anyway you know it it's it, uh, it does look cool that's basically why you build a shuttle on this game because then it looks cool and you'll notice it is launching upside down or you know seemingly upside down that is because um well in real life it was launched upside upside down so the uh pilots are pushed into their seat rather than pulled out of it because if you experience ne negative g's in launch it's kind of it's hard to con control but anyway you see it's actually having slight uh, imbalance problems so i stop burning out of that tank and start burning out of the top tank and transfer a bit of fuel into the middle tank um, so that it just kind of keeps it balanced and I'll be doing that a, li a little bit in launch and you'll notice it uh, probably um, but I mean it is a problem kind of a mass imbalance with the fuel tanks I mean it is something I've managed to solve a bit but it does take a little bit of effort that is the main reason why this is um, much harder to launch and you will notice quite a lot that I do keep switching from Okay, yeah, now it's tipping over quite badly. Um, you, I do keep switching from um, map to normal view because I didn't put MechJab on it and I need orbit data. And that's tipping over quite violently, um, which is actually surprisingly good for my launch. And I would have done it at some point anyway, but it's kind of a little scary when you're about to tip downwards. Although, for those engines to be burning along the horizon, um, the nose has to be pointed at about 15 degrees downwards. So, I mean, it, it's all right. Uh, and you do have to basically eyeball uh, where uh, where where the engines are pointing when you're trying to get to orbit. But anyway, that is my atmosphere. My atmosphere out of the Apple Apps. No, my Apple Apps out of the atmosphere. Um, uh, so now I need to maneuver down to be pointing along the horizon to get efficiently get to space because you don't want to be using burning unnecessary fuel. But because I have a fairly light payload today, um, I do have a little bit of extra delta V in the fuel tanks. So that's always good. Um, all orbital maneuvering in this is done by RCS, like the real space shuttle, um, and more importantly like Scott Manley space shuttle, because that's what this is based on, with slightly bigger fuel tanks and slightly bigger engines, um, quite heavily because I'm not using ferrum aerospace which makes the atmosphere slightly less thick, but I'm not very good at flying in ferrum aerospace, um, although I do have to use it in my rescaled Kerbin series. I know you want to be burning kind of well at this point you want to be burning basically as hard as you can without losing control of the spacecraft because later you have to be throttling down quite um you have to be throttled down quite a bit or you lose complete control of the spacecraft because you don't have the fuel to move around to kind of keep under control and that is a very big problem in this when it's low on fuel when it's low on fuel you can't burn that fast um and that's bad if you've missed your velocity vector slightly which i do um which is a little annoying but uh but I, I kind of deal with it quite well, I think. Well, fairly well. I've flown the space shuttle enough to, um, you know, kind of know what I'm doing. Because it is my, uh, oh yeah, I'm not, now, now I'm burning quite heavily. To, no, I've lost control. Um, that is annoying. Uh, I have done, I, usually when I launch it, I don't lose that much control. But I was actually rushing this a little bit, which was very foolish. So now I'm putting all of the fuel in the back fuel tank. And I keep forgetting that if you right-click away, it stops transferring fuel, which is annoying. But uh, but yeah, on my career mode save, which I just play by myself, not on the channel. Um, I this is kind of my main method to get into space right now, just because it looks cool. No other reason. You don't need other reasons. As long as your spacecraft looks cool, it'll be fine. Uh, so that's that's always good. But anyway, um, you'll notice also there's solar panels on the side. Um, now the real shuttle used, oh fucking hell, I've lost control again, and I have gone past my Apple Apps, so I actually do launch into um, a slightly, a slightly elliptical, uh, no, yeah, elliptical orbit, which is a little annoying, but it's fine, um, and now it's really having control issues, worse than I've ever seen, actually, um, 
which is confusing because usually it launches slightly better than this. But anyway, that is almost up to orbital orbital velocity. Um, and there you go. There's the, there's the parry apps. But the Apple apps rises to about a hundred kilometers, which is a little annoying. But I can solve that with RCS once I ditch this fuel tank. Um, yeah, so it's a little it's a little imbalanced, but I have a lot of RCS on this because all of the orbital maneuvers are done like that. Um, so that's that's good. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna ditch that fuel tank now, um, and you will notice there is a react. Re huh? <laughs> completely screwed that sentence up. There is a reaction wheel on the bottom of the uh, of the fuel tank, and there is one in the cargo bay. There are only two reaction wheels on this, which um, which is enough to keep it stable. If you put like five reaction wheels on it, it would be fairly easy to fly, but I don't know. That's no fun. Yeah. And I mean, I've, I've got enough experience from using this as my main method of getting to space. But anyway, I must uh, bring that down because the people who have contracted me to, um, uh, the people who have co um, contracted me to launch the satellite uh, needed in a 70 kilometer orbit or thereabouts. I think they're Kerbal Communications. Um, and they don't want it in an, ellip in an elliptical orbit, which will be unpredictable. They need to know exactly where where it's going to point at all at all times. Um, so the atomic clock can keep count. Although it does have its own RCS and probably enough to bring it down. Um, so I mean, really, there's no point for this uh, storytelling. But it's always fun to have storytelling in this game. Um, oh, and we've just skipped through that because uh, you don't want to see all of that. That was actually badly skipped. So you know. I just, yeah, okay, but anyway, we're now in a position to eject that, smashing it into the back of the cargo bay, Kerbal Con will not find out about that, Kerbal Com, Kerbal Coms, not Kerbal Con, Kerbal Con, something different, anyway, so let's move it away from the spacecraft, um, and hope that that probe core isn't too damaged from battering against the back, and hope that we don't get sued by Kerbal Communications, so they will be deploying their um, the communications, which, uh, you know, the, this is the second contract against the SSTO, so that's all good. And I've realized I've come to the end of the episode, effectively, so I uh, should probably stop rambling. And they have a materials bay there for testing new stuff and things. Okay, done with the storytelling. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you're all, um, going to watch the next episode where I land these. Um, and there may be a few screw-ups in there before I land them properly. Mm -hmm -hmm. And I may break some physics Kerbal laws. I don't know. Anyway. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video, I hope you're interested in this sort of thing, because uh, it's really fun to do. So anyway, this has been KSP with Tape, I'll see you next time.